rapper Snoop Dogg recently announced that he bought Death Row Records from the MNRK Music Group. At the moment, terms of the deal are hush-hush, but Variety says this move is part of a bigger plan to own the label's music rights. For Snoop the Entrepreneur, this makes sense. Hip-hop fandom reports that the company generated close to $750 million in the past, thanks to selling millions of albums in the 1990s. The label was a giant in the industry back then. Under co-founder Shug Knight, it dropped albums by Tupac Shakur and Snoop himself. Those tracks went on to define West Coast gangster rap. But since then, things have gone sour. Tupac was shot dead in 1996, and Knight is serving a 28-year prison sentence for voluntary manslaughter. In 2006, Death Row went bankrupt and has changed hands several times. Snoop believes, however, that the company's bound for a comeback, even though it hasn't produced an album in the past 15 years. That is, until Snoop recently dropped his latest, called B.O.D.R., or Back on Death Row. Yet, he may not be a patron saint for the fledging label. Snoop is being taken to court over allegations of sexual assault at a concert in 2013. Snoop denies the claims and says they're an attempt at shaking him down after the new acquisition. It means Death Row Records may not be making money just yet, but it's once again surrounded by controversy. Lee Savage joins us now. He's the author of the book, Welcome to Death Row. Lee, thank you so much for joining us today. So it's pretty much come full circle, hasn't it? Snoop Dogg buying the label that pretty much launched his career in the 90s. You know, I don't know the exact particulars, but it does look like he's starting with the label, the name and the label itself. Snoop has a long history of mentoring and sponsoring uh, groups, the Dog Pound and the East Siders, etc. So it looks like, you know, I mean, he he's going to be a brilliant A&R guy to bring new acts into uh, this new death row uh, configuration that he's doing. I think what he's doing is looking at, you know, the old assets there and uh, tracks and things, you know, that he would want to incorporate into this new configuration, and then he's going to add artists to that. Now, it's pretty interesting that you say that, because in terms of the deal itself, uh, not much information has actually been disclosed on the financial terms. What do you think uh, actually comes into play in terms of assets and things like that in the acquisition? Yeah, again, I think what he's Doing, I don't know. I'm not privy to those those negotiations, but it does appear that you know he's he's um, assembling a, a a new label, and I would be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Blackstone ends up being more of a partner in this than you know what it, what appears now. Just given Snoop's ability to attract new talent, I I don't know if you saw you know the Super Bowl performance yesterday, but I mean, it was one of the most sensational shows I've ever seen, a halftime show in the history of Su the Super Bowl. And it almost feels like this is a, you know, he's, he's sort of previewing, I think, what he might be doing in terms of the label going, going forward. Uh, definitely so. You know, the I watched that halftime show. The performance was just electrifying. And in uh, regards to that, bef right before the halftime show, he actually dropped a new album on Death Row Records. So, what what do you what are your thoughts on this calculated move to put the label back on the map? Uh, look, Snoop's on fire. Snoop's on fire. Uh, he's he's become a major entrepreneur. He's got obviously incredible he's smart as hell anyway but he's also surrounded himself with good people so this is just look he's in the nft business he's he's in the pot business he's in the liquor business he's you know 
So this is just the, I, I think there's some poetic justice, I think, in him going back and, you know, acquiring the, you know, the label that, you know, he had to leave, you know, 20 plus years ago, you know, when it, when the label collapsed, you know, amid all the problems and issues that Suge Knight had. So uh, I think it's part of this, you know, this puzzle, these, this large, you know, uh, business configuration that he's, that, that he's, uh, just another piece of the constellation of businesses that he's got. You know, you mentioned that. Now, it, I've read that his net worth is believed to be somewhere in the ballpark of $150 million. And on top of that, he cited his role as a creative consultant at Def Jam Records as why he, it's, you know, it shows that he clearly will know what he's doing in reinvigorating death row. He also has dozens of business ventures from cannabis, vegan food to investing in Reddit. But do you think he really has the entrepreneurial chops to turn this label around? When, you know, when I was assembling uh, the death row documentary, which, pre, you know, which came before the book, you know, uh, the death row book, uh, we interviewed Snoop. He's a very bright guy. He he just is, and he's very smart. So I I think he does have the chops. But you know, it's also it's who you surround yourself with. It's the experts and the you know he's look he's he's friends with Martha Stewart, and you know he can avail himself of her uh, you know the people she knows and and others. He's just smart about. Who he aligns himself with so and he's also very loyal snoop's very loyal anybody that helped him uh you know early on he tends to remember okay so you say he's very loyal he's sur he's surrounded himself with the right people but um i also think that people have said that he's clearly a marketing genius. He's been able to stay relevant for the past 30 years. But does that yeah. translate to actually being a business owner? Can he really, really turn this uh, business around? I think so. I, I really do. If, um, you know, I, I just, I truly believe he will. <laughs> um, I, I think you're going to see major artists, new artists emerge out of the death row fold and uh, create value there that, uh, you know, uh, is is going to be very significant. Right. So you so it looks like what you believe is that death row will actually be influential as it once was, you know, even though today it's largely seen as a legacy label. Right. And I think, I mean, look, the the performance you saw there at the Super Bowl, you know, really is it, it's just the absolute mainstreaming of of, uh, you know, hip hop and, you know, where Death Row. Imagine Death Row's beginnings, you know, hard edged gangster rap evolving to, you know, what you saw in the Super Bowl yesterday. Uh, I think that, you know, kind of presages what we're going to see going forward. And that's why the, the value equation can be anticipated. What sort of legacy do we see from Death Row Records today? And what does Snoop at the helm mean for hip hop today as a whole? I don't know. I, I've, Snoop is the epitome of the American dream. You look at, uh, you know, where he started in Long Beach and, you know, a guy who, you know, coming from a rough background, he is, uh, he's the American dream. He's what, you know, uh, I mean, that's the, Snoop embodies, I think, what the, uh, um, you know, what everybody in America would, would hope for themselves, hope to achieve for themselves. So, uh, and he just, He's got it. I mean, he's so charismatic, you know, not only as a rapper, but as a, I mean, he's funny. I don't know if you I mean, <laughs> I remember seeing him on the, you know, when Donald Trump was roasted on uh, uh, Comedy Central years ago and Snoop stole it. I mean, he got up there and and was the by far the funniest, uh, you know, person on the, you know, that that roasted Trump. Um, so, 
uh, with Snoop back at the helm of Death Row Records, do you think we could see a return to the reemergence of gangster rap? Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. I can't. Uh, I, I think they're um, very hard to. I, I don't. I don't necessarily know. I think that's the. That was the foundation of the label. That's uh, you know that produced that hard-edged music produced you know seven consecutive multi-platinum albums. Uh, that was the you know the foundation with Snoop and Dre and Tupac, etc. Um, I I think it's going to evolve from there. That's that's my sense. But uh, you know. Uh, I don't know the particulars yet. I think we have to wait and see. Thank you so much, Lee Savage, for those insights into Death Row Records and what we can expect from the legendary label in the years to come.